Sham. Sham. Where are you? No answer. Where is that boy? When I find him, I'm going to. Aunt Mary looked under the bed. Then she opened the door and looked out into the garden. Sham. She heard something behind her. A small boy ran past, but Aunt Mary put out her hand and stopped him. Ah, there you are. And what's that in your pocket? Nothing, Aunt Mary. Nothing. It's an apple. I can see it. Now listen, Sham. Those apples are not for you, and I dash O, oh, Aunt Mary. Quick, look behind you. So Aunt Mary looked, and Sham was out of the house in a second. She laughed quietly. I never learn. I love that Sham, my dead sister's child, but he isn't an easy boy for an old lady. Well, it's Saturday Shamoro and there's no school, but it isn't going to be a holiday for Sham. Oh no. He's going to work Shamoro. Saturday was a beautiful day. It was summer and the sun was hot and there were flowers in all the gardens. It was a day for everybody to be happy. Sham came out of his house with a brush and a big pot of white paint in his hand. He looked at the fence, it was 3 meters high and 30 meters long. He put his brush in the paint and painted some of the fence. He did it again. Then he stopped, and looked, at the fence, put down his brush, and sat down. There were, hours of work in front of him, and he was the unhappiest boy, in the village. After ten minutes Sham had an idea, a wonderful idea. He took up the brush again, and began work. He saw his friend Joe Harper, in the street, but he didn't look at him. Joe had an apple, in his hand. He came up to Sham and looked at the fence. I am sorry, Sham. Sham said nothing. The paintbrush moved up and down. Working for your aunt? Said Joe. I'm going down to the river. I'm sorry you can't come with me. Sham put down his brush. You call this work? He said. Tainting a fence? Said Joe. Of course it's work. Perhaps it is and perhaps it isn't. But I like it, said Sham. I can go to the river any day. I can't paint a fence very often. Joe watched Sham for about five minutes. Sham painted very slowly and carefully. He often stopped, moved back from the fence, and looked at his work with a smile. Joe began to get very interested and said, Sham, can I paint a little? Oh, please, Sham, just a little. I'm good at painting, too. Hey, do you want some of my apple? No, Joe, I can't dash okay, you can have all my apple. Sham gave Joe the brush. He did not smile. But for the first time that day he was a very happy boy. He sat down and ate Joe's apple. More friends came to laugh at Sham, but soon they all wanted to paint, too. By the afternoon, Sham had three balls, an old knife, a cat with one eye, an old blue bottle, and a lot of other exciting things. He was the richest boy in St. Petersburg, and the fence, all 30 meters of it was a beautiful wide. He went back to the house. Aunt Mary. Can I go and play now? Aunt Mary came out of the house to look. When she saw the beautiful wide fence, she was very pleased. 
She took Sham into the house and gave him an apple. Well, you can go and play. But don't come home late. Sham quickly took a second apple and ran off. On Monday morning Sham didn't want to go to school, but Aunt Mary got him out of bed, and then out of the house. In the street near the school he met his friend Huckleberry Finn. Huck had no mother, and his father drank whiskey all the time, so Huck lived in the streets. He didn't go to school, he was always dirty, and he never had a new shirt. But he was happy. The mothers, of St. Petersburg didn't like Huck, but Sham and his friends did. Hello, Huck, said Sham. What have you got there? A dead cat. What are you going to do with it? asked Sham. I'm going to take it to the graveyard tonight, Huck said. At midnight. A dead cat can call ghosts out of their graves. I never heard that, said Sham. Is it true? Well, I don't know, said Huck. Old Mrs. Hopkins told me. Come with me, and see. Or are you afraid of ghosts? Of course not, said Sham. Come and meow for me at my window at eleven o'clock. After this, Sham was late for school, and the teacher looked at him angrily. Thomas Sawyer, why are you late again? He said. Sham began to speak, and then stopped. There was a new girl in the schoolroom, a beautiful girl with blue eyes and long yellow hair. Sham looked and looked. Oh, how beautiful she was. And in two seconds Sham was in love. He must sit next to her. But how? In the girl's half of the room there was only one empty chair, and it was next to the new girl. Sham thought quickly, and then looked at the teacher. I stopped to talk with Huckleberry Tin, he said. The teacher was very, very angry. Boys were often late for school. That was bad. But talking with Huckleberry Finn was worse, much worse. The teacher took his stick, and two minutes later Sham's trousers were very hot and the teacher's arm was very tired. Now, Sham Sawyer, you go and sit with the girls. Some of the children laughed. Sham walked to the chair next to the new girl sat down and opened his book. The other children began to work again. After ten minutes, the girl looked up. There was an apple on the table in front of her. She put it back on Sham's half of the table. A minute later the apple was in front of her again. Now it stayed. Next, Sham drew a picture of a house and put it in front of her. That's nice, the girl said. Now draw a man. Shem drew a man next to the house. Dot the man was taller than the house, and he had very big hands and very long legs. But the girl liked him. Can you draw me now? She asked. Shem drew a girl next to the man. You draw beautifully. I can't draw pictures. I can teach you, said Sham. After school. Oh, please. What's your name? Shem asked. Becky. Becky Thatcher. Just then Sham felt a hand on his head. It was the teacher. He took Sham by the ear and moved him back to his chair in the boys' half of the room. You draw beautifully, said the girl.